Could we look at functional hypertrophy? Uh, keep in mind athletes throughout presentation, since that's what we want to be dealing with. Uh, functional versus non-functional hypertrophy. <coughs> functional meaning uh, sarcomere, <coughs> and non-functional referring to sarcoplasm. We'll give you what those are in a few seconds. First of all, what is hypertrophy? When we think of hypertrophy, we're thinking about big, getting jack Fridays, you know, whatever we're going to call the development of your program. Excessive development of organ or part. Holoquin describes it as the growth of muscle that occurs because muscle body is increasing in size due to resistance training. You work out, you want to kind of get big. Types of hypertrophy, functional, the sarcomere, the myofibrillar, hypertrophy, non-functional, the sarcoplasma. Ronnie Coleman, eight time Mr. Olympia. Oklahoma State, Rose Oklahoma, and so the Vikings they can these. Going back to some exercise skills, the muscle cell contains many myofibrils. Myofibrils contain the sarcomere, which is what contracts. We all know the A bands, the A bands, the discs. Sarcomeres contain the contractile proteins you're active in the myosin. Fiber types, uh, through our own discussion, sometimes we talk about comparing a sprinter to the marathon runner as far as type of fibers, muscle mass. Slow twitch in type 1. They're fatigue resistance. They produce low amounts of power and strength. You are build more for that endurance for that long jeopardy of run. Type 2 fiber, fast twitch, you're going to take a little bit quicker, a little bit quicker, and you're going to produce more high amounts of power and strength. What is the sarcoplasm? It's the goo. Basically, your myofibrils, it's what's in between. If it's not the myofibril, everything else is the sarcoplasm. You contain your ATP, a lot of your energy sources, ATP, glycogen, creatine phosphate, um, the mitochondria, which is you know, the powerhouse of the cell, your capillaries, which be your T tubules, and a lot of your intracellular fluids. In functional hypertrophy, sarcomere or myofibular, it's not the buzzwords like functional training. You know, it's not going to talk about putting a bar on your back and squatting on a big Swiss ball. Okay, it's not functional training. It's more or less, is it functional? Can you utilize it? You know, is it just getting big for getting big safe? Functional hypertrophy is achieved by increase in volume and density, but what's the most important here is that it results in increased strength. It's muscle growth that is strategic, so that it grows in a way that will produce and improve athletic performance. Basically, the philosophy is if you increase the size of the sarcomere, you're going to have stronger, more forceful, but you'll also have the bigger muscle. Non-functional sarcoplasmic hypertrophy, basically you're trying to get just this, the sarcoplasm bigger. There's no utility to it. It's not functional. You can't apply that to the strength. Achieve increase the growth of non-contractile elements. You want to get back to your ATP, your glycogen, your creatine phosphate. You want to increase the size of the sarcoplasm, but it's not going to provide stronger or forceful attractions. But again, you're getting big. It's more of the Ronnie Coleman versus Adrian Peterson. It's going to be the greatest strength. Uh, growth of sarcomere involves the increase in size and the number of the sarcomeres. It increases the density of the myofibrils that contract, and it's going to lead to greater strength. It's kind of worry. Uh, when you grow the sarcoplasm, you're going to increase the non-contractile strength, but you're going to decrease the density of the, uh, the muscle fiber. The sarcoplasm is not going to increase the muscle strength. Going to the application, the translation that some were talking about as far as what you do in the weight room and how it translates to the field. Holoquin uh, stated that he knew six bodybuilders. Mr. Olympians who could not bench press 315 more than six times. So, yeah, you want to get big, but it's not going to produce any translation for any athletic performance. Basic fiber facts bodybuilding, typically your type 1. The way that you're going to look at your type 2, going back to type 1 being the slow twitch, type 2 being the fast twitch. Different percentages of bodybuilding based to, uh, or compared to whether it's in Olympic lifters, high percentage of type 1 in your bodybuilders, type 2. So why do functional hypertrophy? Why focus on the 
the soccer player in hypertrophy. Trying to contribute more to athletes' power is and not as much as they're asset capabilities. Traditional bodybuilding methods for your sarcoplasmic, for your non-functional, your splits, your drop sets. Slow switch responds better to the light weight, higher repetitions. You want to produce that more non-functional hypertrophy. Example of the, you know, the program would be training at the lower percentage, 65 to 70 percent, four to six sets, your traditional what we all heard age 12 repetitions, and typically your 45 to 90 seconds rest. Going for the functional hypertrophy, the sarcomere, you're looking at training at a little bit more high percentage, 85 to 90. Your sets are going to drop down through the four repetitions, drop through the eight, give yourself a long amount of rest because you are increasing that. Facts or fictions, the thought of non-functional versus functional involves around which muscle fibers you wish to train. You wish to train the sarcomere or the sarcoplasmic. There is no magic number. You can't say today I'm just going to do fast twitch, Thursday I'm going to do a slow twitch. You know, Besides saying I'm going to do my middle block of abs, I'm going to let the top and bottom rest today. You can't just pick and pull, pull what you want. You can't grow one without the other. Any type of strength training, you're going to get both. 